The call for more space flights is growing in the U.S. aerospace industry, and SpaceX has consistently shown a willingness to meet these demands. However, the FAA and other regulatory agencies have created obstacles, causing frustration among government officials. Recently, a member of Congress sent a formal letter to the FAA expressing his concerns and asking the agency to make necessary adjustments. So what are the key points raised by the congressman, and why are these changes important for SpaceX and the Starship program? We explore this in more detail on today's episode of NR Studio. Subscribe, like, and share to encourage us to make more videos, and thank you for your support as we get started. SpaceX's preparations for Starship launch are evident in nearly every phase of its operations. Most recently, the future SH-31 prototype, destined for Flight 6, successfully completed a static fire test at the Flame Moat System, a moat test system at the Massey Proving Ground. After experiencing electrical system issues during cryogenic testing in May, the system made a remarkable recovery and passed subsequent testing with flying colors. In the near future, it is planned to return to the production site to prepare for wear testing with Booster 13. Speaking of Booster 13, it completed its cryogenic testing in April and is ready for two more critical phases, static firing and flight wear testing. These preparations should be completed quickly as SpaceX remains efficient in moving its hardware through the necessary testing phases. Along with SH-31 and Booster 13, the SH-30 and Booster 12 pair prepared for Flight 5 are nearly ready for wetsuit testing, marking another important step toward future launches. These ongoing preparations highlight SpaceX's ability to maintain a high launch rate, ready to move forward pending regulatory approvals. However, things have not gone according to SpaceX's expectations. In the previous episode, we reported on the harsh criticism from Congress, as well as industry leaders and many organizations regarding FAA regulations, especially the delay of Starship Flight 5. However, despite the protests, the FAA seems to be sticking to its guns. According to the FAA's position, SpaceX can proceed with Starship launches as long as they follow the same process as previous flights. But this approach is limiting Starship development and impacting not only Flight 5, but also SpaceX's long-term plans and the future of American spaceflight. Recognizing the potential threat to national progress, Texas Congressman Keith Self recently announced on X, and he's the first Twitter, that he had sent a letter strongly urging FAA Administrator Michael Whitaker to expedite the agency's environmental review of SpaceX's Texas projects. He also asserted that Texas should be allowed to continue playing a significant role in the U.S. space enterprise. The tweet contains the letter's content in which Keith himself emphasizes the importance of SpaceX's Starship program. He began to zero in on his target. I wrote about SpaceX's proposed increase in cadence for the Starship Super Heavy Vehicle Program, SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site in Cameron County, Texas. He then emphasized the importance of Starship to the nation's global leadership. Our nation must maintain its commitment to leading the world in the responsible and constructive use of space through innovative commercial industry. And U.S. leadership in this area depends on a nimble and effective regulatory system that encourages and enables rapid business innovation. One of the key points of the letter is the need to increase the frequency of Starship launches. It is important to increase the rate of Starship launches from Starbase from 5 to 25 per year. The development of super heavy lift and global mobility and logistics technologies, as well as NASA's Artemis program to return American astronauts to the moon before China. These concerns are justified. SpaceX has long been the standard for maintaining U.S. leadership in space, thanks to its Falcon rockets and Dragon spacecraft. In the future, Starship will shoulder this responsibility. Self's representatives also highlighted the threat of competition from China as its space efforts rapidly advance, including ambitious plans to land a crew on the moon and build a lunar base. Only SpaceX, with its ability to iterate and launch quickly, can currently ensure that the United States remains ahead. That is why Starbase has proposed 25 launches per year and plans for 44 vols in Florida are so important. However, environmental and regulatory constraints have caused delays that have been exacerbated by recent controversies, including those involving SpaceX and CNBC Congress itself has taken on these challenges head on, saying, as a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, 
I have seen the dangers to our national security space enterprise through well-organized, competitive, state-sponsored competition without oversight or respect for the environment on Earth and in space. We cannot contain or regulate our adversaries. His letter emphasized the FAA's critical role in fostering U.S. leadership in the commercial space sector, particularly as it relates to Starship. He himself expressed disappointment with the FAA's approach. I am disappointed that the FAA seems to be swayed by the false narrative of the national media. Even though the FAA's own environmental assessment clearly states that the 25th annual Starship Super Heavy Launch Vehicle launch and landing at Starbase will not cause environmental harm. Our national security must not allow inaccurate information to hamper American innovation. This issue is about more than just the delay of Flight 5. A few months ago, the FAA announced that it was reviewing SpaceX's proposal to increase the frequency of launches at Starbase and planned to hold a public meeting after much debate in a CNBC incident. The meeting was canceled, leading to widespread disappointment that at its conclusion, Keith Self urged the FAA to act quickly. We strongly urge your agency to immediately approve SpaceX's proposal to increase the launch rate at Starbase from 5 to 25 launches per year. After this information was made public, it received a lot of attention. Musk briefly responded to the two tweets citing Congressman Self's letter, saying, very much appreciated and cool. This brief response reflects Musk's growing frustration with the FAA, especially in light of the recent fines imposed on SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rockets. Personally, I fully support the views expressed by Congressman Self in his letter. And you? Do you agree? If so, please indicate, I agree, in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with SpaceX's journey, especially regarding the Starship program in the FAA. Now, when it comes to the FAA, there's more reason to question their decisions, especially when it comes to bias against certain companies. Musk himself pointed this out recently, drawing a direct comparison between the FAA's approach to SpaceX and Boeing's Starliner program. But Boeing isn't the only one raising concerns. There are other companies that are more important to the FAA and Starship. Blue Origin and its New Glenn Planet have also faced a series of delays with the rocket's first mission, carrying a Blue Ring payload, pushed back to November, while its mission to launch NASA's space shuttle to Mars, Escapade, has been rescheduled for a second flight in 2024. Despite the delays, Blue Origin is laying out an ambitious path for New Glenn's future. Jarrett Jones, Blue Origin's senior vice president of New Glenn, told a panel at World Space Business Week on September 16th that after the first two missions, the company plans to quickly jump to 12 flights by 2025. If all goes well, they aim to double that number to 24 by 2026. But it's not just the frequency of launches that Blue Origin is focused on. They're also aiming for reusability, an area that SpaceX has pioneered. On New Glenn's first launch, they plan to reach orbit and land their booster. It's a bold move, and CEO Dave Limp confidently states that no one has ever accomplished such a feat on their first flight. In preparation, Blue Origin recently launched its drone ship earlier this month, signaling its serious intentions to build a fleet of reusable rockets. Jones said that by the end of 2025, Blue Origin plans to have four boosters in rotation, and in the coming years, they plan to build two to four more boosters per year, each capable of up to 25 flights. This aggressive roadmap clearly shows Blue Origin's intention to compete with SpaceX, and it's interesting that its plans could also begin with New Glenn's D-Day flight, which could happen before Starship Flight 5. In this regard, it's hard to ignore the lack of FAA intervention in Blue Origin's case. Despite their similar operational rhythms, only SpaceX appears to be facing significant regulatory hurdles. This raises an interesting question. With the FAA and other agencies deliberately slowing SpaceX down to give Blue Origin a competitive advantage, at least for now, the evidence points in that direction. After all, after Blue Origin delayed New Glenn's first flight, the FAA suddenly announced a delay to Starship Flight 5. The timing seems more than coincidental. Such potential regulatory interference undermines the principles of fair competition, which could have serious consequences for America's space leadership. If one company continues to favor another, it could stifle innovation and hinder America's progress in space, especially given the competitive threat posed by other countries. 
So while Blue Origin is gearing up for a series of launches with few regulatory hurdles, SpaceX finds itself mired in bureaucratic hurdles. If this trend continues, it may not be the market or technology that determines the future of American airspace, but rather agencies like the FAA. Such interventions could have long-term implications for America's ability to maintain its leadership in space, both in terms of commercial innovation and national security. While we wait to see the effects of the latest letter from Texas representative, Keith Self calling on the FAA to expedite its review of SPACEX, the stakes are not clearly high. America's future place in space may depend not only on the technological capabilities of companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin, but also on whether these companies can compete on a level playing field. Only time will tell if necessary regulatory changes will be made or if bias and bureaucracy will continue to hamper U.S. space development and dominance. That's it for today's episode. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.